let's now try to understand the flow of the object calls from the Spring Boot application to perform the CRUD operations on the key cloak application. Here for user, if you see within the key cloak, if we select a specific ream, then within this ream, if we select the users, within the users list, we'll be able to see the list of users. So basically, this flow or the this path is the base for the API calls within the key cloak application. If you see here for users CRUD operations, the object or the class that is being used in the key cloak will be user representation. And all of these operations we are going to perform within the Spring Boot application. So key cloak dot ream with the ream name dot users dot list gives you the list of user representations and dot create by sending a user representation object will create a new user representation or user and dot delete of the id will delete that specific user and users dot get of id will provide us a pointer to that specific user and to representation will give us the user representation object and update with the user representation object will update that specific user representation or the user. Similarly, for role, what do we do in the key cloak UI? From the key cloak, we'll go to this specific ream and from this ream, we'll select the specific ream roles and this will show us the list of roles. So API call in the Spring Boot application will also be following the similar pattern. Keycloak.ream with the ream name dot roles dot list. Here every arrow represents a dot operation. Roles dot list will give us the list of role representation. Dot create will create a role representation and delete we will use delete role with the role name and not the id and get of the role name will give us the pointer to that specific role representation and to representation will provide us the object of this class and update will update that specific user representation now in the authentication what do we do in the ui from the key cloak we'll select a specific ream and from this ream we'll select clients from the list of clients we will select one specific client and within this specific client we find authorization tab and if we select this authorization tab we can see resources scopes policies and permissions the same thing is going to happen for the api call using the object representations here yeah. keycloak.ream ream name dot clients dot get client with that specific client id dot authorization and within this authorization we have resources scopes policies and permissions these are the method names so authorization dot all of these will point us to specific authorization configuration and for the authorization resource, as you can see, authorization dot resources dot resources will give us the list of resource representation. If you have seen in users and the roles, we use dot list. Here we use resources dot resources to get the list of resource representations. And dot create, if we send this resource representation, will create a new resource and dot resource of id will provide us a pointer for that specific resource and to representation will give us the object of resource representation and remove will delete the resource if you see we do not have dot delete of id here but instead dot remove and dot update will update that specific resource similarly for scopes as well authorization dot scopes dot scopes will give us the list of scope representation and dot create will create this specific scope dot scope of id will provide us a pointer to that specific scope representation and 
two representation will give us the scope representation and remove will remove update will update the scope representation and the same thing happens for policy as well authorization dot policies dot policies for list dot create for creating a policy dot policy with the id will give us that specific policy pointer and then to representation remove and update but for permissions we have two different ways of creating a permission one is resource based permission and scope based permission what should happen now authorization dot permissions dot resource will be one way dot scope will be another way that is what we will be doing here so authorization dot permissions dot resource will go for the resource based permission creation we will have the class resource permission representation for resource dot create will create this resource permission representation and dot find by id will give us a pointer to that specific resource permission representation we also have find by name but we will use this find by id over here and again from this to representation will give us this specific object remove will delete and update will update this re resource permission representation and from permissions dot scope we have the operations on scope based permissions and scope permission representation will be the class dot create will create this scope based permission and dot find by id will give us a pointer similar to how we got here we also have find by name as well we'll use this find by id dot to representation will give us the object dot remove will remove this specific permission and update will update the permission so this is a general idea of how we can find out the method calls within the key cloak object so that a specific rest api for our crud operation can be invoked so that's it for this video thanks for watching